We are just about set, ready to go. Not an empty seat in the house. What an atmosphere on a spectacular Sunday afternoon. Montana won the coin toss and deferred. The Jackrabbits, the defending national champions, set to receive as Grant Glasgow gets us underway in the Lone Star State. And with the aid of that gusty breeze, Jackrabbits will get it after the touchback. Mark Radowski, the most decorated player in the history of SDSU football. Roddy, you talked about him with our crew earlier this week. He has been so impressive. He leads America in passing efficiency entering this championship. He certainly does. And the fact that he's only turned the ball over four times all season goes towards the success of this SDSU offense. He has been so impressive in the playoffs. His legs have been a big factor for this Jackrabbits team. He's been completing about a high clip as well. Isaiah Davis joins him in the backfield. And the handoff along the left side, stacked up and driven backwards. And a gain of two on first down as Montana was ready and waiting against the nation's leading ground gainer. And we're going to call number 99 Alex Gubner's name a lot. This is a Montana defense that's a little bit undersized, except for at that nose tackle spot. Gubner, the deep, big sky defensive player of the year, makes the tackle there. Montana's going to have to use movement, twists and stunts from that undersized defensive line to stop this run game. Ten starters back for the Jackrabbits on offense in 2023. And play action for Gronowski into the flats. Swing it out to Jackson Yonke. Scampers ahead for a first down and then some. Yonke with the hurdle into plus territory. And a gain of 27 on that pitch and catch. Tackling in the open field going to be huge. Gronowski does a good job just dumping the ball off. Nass Vouch not able to make the tackle, and Jackson Yankee makes them pay. The Yankee twins are a big part of this offense. Not just their ability to catch the ball, but after the catch, they are both explosive players. On first down, Gronowski with time into the flats the other direction and another decent play as Fouch makes the stop after a gain of seven. Another another broken tackle though, and let's not forget that these teams last played. We got a flag in the Southland officiating crew after the grab by Wilde. Infraction takes it back. The referee be, Gary Leeper. I believe that was an illegal formation call, but remember these two teams last played back in the middle of December. That game against North Dakota State for Montana on December 16th. South Dakota State played on the exact same day. So they've had three weeks off. Tackling going to be a big thing early in this game. So instead of second and three, it'll be first and 15. Gronowski again, this time to his tight end, Zach Hines. And back across the original line of scrimmage, a seven-yard pickup, Fouch the tackle. Jimmy Rogers, year number one, leading the charge for the Jacks. He's a former defensive coordinator under Coach Stigelmeyer. He has yet to lose a game. And the Eddie Robinson Award winner, recognizing the FCS National Coach of the Year for his efforts in year one. And a former linebacker for the Jacks. We saw his playing career come to a close dramatically against these same Montana Grizz in Missoula back in 2009. Handoff straight ahead, Davis. Picks up a yard. And it'll be third down. Really nice job at the point of attack by Alex Gubner and Cale Edwards on that defensive line. Forcing a third and long. This is where Montana has to win. They've been very good on third downs. Mention the movement. This is where they thrive. They go man-to-man -man a lot on the back end. Trust their defensive backs. They're going to have to win those battles and try and get home to Mark Gronowski. Remember, Gronowski's legs play a big factor as well. Jack Rabbits need seven. 
time for Gronowski across the middle. That's enough for a first down. Braxton Hill with the stop. And the grab made by Jackson Yonke to move the chains in a gain of eight. Yeah, it ends up being man-to-man -man coverage, and Yonke running a crossing route just runs away from Trevin Gradney. Creates a little bit of space, and that's all Mark Gronowski needs to deliver an accurate throw for a first down. SDSU leads the country in third down conversions coming in at over 54%. Gronowski throws it back to Davis. Can he get to the edge? A nifty move to make something out of nothing. That play was read beautifully by the Grizz, a gain of three. Jana Caro, the tackle, makes his first stop wearing number 37. Yeah, that game, that play should have been stopped for a loss of about three. Really nice job by a really hard player to tackle on Isaiah Davis of creating a positive play out of something that probably should have gone for a loss. Jacks had an extra tight end, 83 Quentin Christensen, a reserve tackle. Mark Johnson on the field for the first time in the backfield. Gronowski again with time, fires it to Johnson, the pass is high, he corrals it, and a first down and a tough hit. Issued by Johnson on Ryder Meyer in a gain of 10. It's a really nice decision by Mark Gronowski. They were trying to hit Michael Morgan on a little tight end wheel where he comes from the wide side of the field back to the boundary and then up the sideline. Montana covered that really well. So what does Gronowski do? Second time we've seen him hit the check down for a big game. Five minutes in, opening possession in Frisco. SDSU on the move. Gronowski, a perfect start. Straight up quarterback run. And the power game ahead to the 15. Gubner the tackle, a gain of six. Alex Gubner did a pretty good job of fighting off a block, but Mark Gronowski just drug him down the field. Probably got away with a little bit of a face mask because that hand gets up really high. With Tug there, hard to see in the pile, but Nonetheless, he's had a power of Gronowski dragging the nose tackle. Meeting with him yesterday, 6'3", 225, powerful lower body. He's been in the weight room with his buddy Isaiah Davis these last three and a half years in Brookings. Bobby Houck says it all the time, the weight room ain't broken. Indeed it is not. Gronowski flushed on the move, pass incomplete looking for Hines. And the pass sailed high over the 6'7 target and the senior from Sioux Falls. And another third and medium for this Jack Rabbits offense. Again, Montana is going to have to be able to win these downs. The, this offense is so good that you have to take advantage when you get to those third downs. The question is, 10 plays into this drive, where is the, condi the, the conditioning of this Montana off defense on the first drive of the game? Davis flanks Gronowski on third and four. Gronowski steps up, he's gonna run for it. First down and goal for the Jacks. Gronowski stopped at the five, a gain of 10. Meyer prevented the touchdown, but here comes SDSU. Well, they send the blitz, and Braxton Hill and Alex Governor almost get home, but it opens up a lane for Mark Gronowski. And this is what makes this South Dakota State offense so hard. Even when you cover well on the back end, and you win your battles up front rushing the passer, they're still able to make you pay for a first down because of the legs of Gronowski. Kevin Brenner, Michael Morgan on the field at the same time to block for Isaiah Davis. Davis to the edge, 22 across the goal line for the touchdown. And SDSU strikes first in Frisco. Seventeen rushing touchdowns on this season and now 18 after that scamper that ties Jordan Fuller as the leader in the FCS Fuller the standout for the Furman Paladins SDSU now has scored an opening touchdown or field goal in seven straight games 
Getting back to the regular season. Hunter Dustman's extra point is good. And our new score, nearly seven minutes in, seven nothing. And the defending national champion strike first with Zay Davis getting the honors. Isaiah Davis getting the job done from six yards out moments ago. SDSU strikes first. Mark Gronowski on the horn talking to his coaching staff high above here in Frisco. And we told you going out to break, how about seven straight opening drive, ending in a score of some kind. Consistency, what you would expect from a defending champion. The numbers that this team has put up on both sides of the ball are eye-popping. That being one of them, I mean, to come out seven straight games ready to play, put together a scoring off, a scoring drive, put the pressure on the opposite side, absolutely tremendous. Now, Taylor McGregor told you to get your popcorn ready. Montana and their special teams. Junior Bergen, the big reason why. Mr. Electricity. He's taken back punt returns for touchdowns, kickoff returns for touchdowns. He's done it all for head coach Bobby Howe. And Bergen gets a chance. Into the sunlight, Bergen. Nearly lasso down from behind, and there he goes. Junior Bergen across the 40, a return of 40. And Montana with outstanding field position because of the play and the return of Junior Berg and Roddy. When South Dakota State is kicking this way, they're kicking into the wind, which is going to keep the ball in the field to play. And you see the things that make Junior Bergen special. The balance through contact and the speed up the sideline sets Montana up offensively pretty well. Second team All-American. We will see him in a variety of ways on offense this afternoon. Clifton McDowell on the field, a native of Spring, Texas. Some 250 miles to the south of us here in Frisco. Hands it off to Gilman. And the redshirt freshman powers his way to the 45, a gain of three. And the tackle by Jason Freeman. And this offense didn't start with Clifton McDowell as its starter at the beginning of the season, but a guy who got here in the summertime after transferring in from Central Arkansas, eventually took over the reins of the offense. And they've gone with some unique stuff. Wide splits in the offensive line to help create running rooms. And his running ability has been big for him. Play action, McDowell. Fires a strike to Keelan White, the leading receiver short of the first down, but into plus territory. It'll be third and short. Gales making the tackle after a gain of six. I thought they would give him forward progress on that one. Now they're right at the sticks, and they're going to give him the first down, I think, Roy. Chains are late to move, but indeed they will. And a significant moment early after the touchdown by South Dakota State. Early first down for the Grizz. And big, because that, that was a double-digit play drive for South Dakota State. Keeping that defense off the field, keeping the Montana defense off the field is going to be huge. Them getting their win back. Four-man front, here comes the delayed blitz into the flats to Gilman. How about that move? And a powerful finish, tumbling out of bounds near the 45. It was Adam Bach that led the charge, a gain of two. The speed of this SDSU defense is what pops out on film. They're good at all three levels, but sideline to sideline, their speed makes them different. Adam Bach able to track Eli Gilman down for a short gain there, and against most teams, that goes for at least 10. This defense has been elite, yielding less than 10 points per game this year. Jackrabbits have not really been challenged outside of just two games on the schedule. Dump off across the middle. It's Gilman again, and the freshman powers his way ahead. Across the 40, a gain of eight. Stallburn with a tackle. And this time it is third and short. Really like what they've done for Eli Gilman, or excuse me, for Clifton McDowell early in this game, hitting the check down to Eli Gilman but a couple of easy completions. They said that they want to stretch SDSU horizontally, make them tackle in space, instead of running right into the teeth of this defense. Two tight ends on the field. Montana 43% on third down this year. Eli Gilman straight ahead with a jump cut and a first down, and that was nearly six for the Grizz. A touchdown saving tackle by the shoestrings at the last minute. Gain of four, and it was Colby Herter 
and prevented that potential score. Really good jump cut in the backfield by Eli Gilman. Bursts up the field, and you're right. If Colby Herter doesn't make that tackle, he hits his head on the goalpost for six for Montana. I'm always concerned that that's going to hurt the player no, that does that. No, it feels that. good because you're, you run for a touchdown and you hit your head on the goalpost as a, as a a almost a reward. Good vibes only is what I'm hearing. Right. Gilman, delayed handoff, and they give ahead to the 30. How about Gilman's power? He'll push the pile a little bit across the 30-yard line. He'll stop forward progress near the 30. And initially a gain of five, but Gilman's been impressive as the Jerry Rice Award winner, recognizing the top offensive freshman of the year. He has, and I think the time off makes it, I mean, he looks a little bit more sprightly than he has the last few games, where that, that grind of the season starts to get to you. Nick Osmo has done a, a, a big part of carrying the football in the backfield he's in now over the last few games, but Eli Gilman looks like he's up for the task today. 26 in maroon and white, the first appearance for Osmo, the senior from Portland, Oregon. And on the jet sweep, to the edge. And a good play for Xavier Harris, ushered out after a gain of four more, and Montana keeping SDSU back on its heels on this first possession for the Grizz. Hey, Eli Gil, uh, excuse me, Clifton McDowell is there and right down the barrel of a blitz as Jason Freeman's coming downhill. Freeman just guesses wrong. If he guesses the back, he makes a tackle in the backfield. It's a nice job, though, of Harris being able to get around all of the trash out there and get up the field. First big play for the Grizz, third down and one. Osmo the hammer in the backfield, he'll get the call. And I don't know, stacked up at the line and he's gonna be stopped short. Quinton Hicks, the senior from Wichita, creates fourth down for the Grizz. And Ronnie Jones, what do you do here if you're Bobby Howe? Well, you're kicking in with the win, but kicker, kicking the kicking game has been a bit of an adventure for Montana this season. They're leaving the offense on the field. I like the aggressiveness. I would put the ball in Clifton McDowell's hands, let him make a decision on some sort of zone read, unless you've got something better. Gilman in the backfield along with Osmo, who now motions to join him. They'll throw it, McDowell, Osmo, the senior, and a first down. Dragged down at the 20, a gain of six on fourth and one. Well, I like the play action, getting McDowell on the perimeter, quick toss to Nick Osmo. That motion in the backfield creates a little confusion on who's going to cover him in man-to-man -man coverage, and a great conversion. Taylor? Bobby Houck before the game about aggressiveness, especially on fourth down, and he said, I don't believe in analytics. There are too many X factors. He goes with his gut, and guys, clearly it paid off there. It did. Now 11 of 21 on fourth down this season. The Montana Grizz, Big Sky champions. Bergen and Gilman in the backfield. Those wide splits you can see clearly. Time for McDowell. He's one, and it's caught. And on the slant, initial indication is a grab by Keelan White. And a gain of nine yards, the tackle by Gales. It's a great delivery, and what a great response drive by Montana after the long drive by the Jackrabbits offense. I mean, they have come to play, they have been efficient, and Clifton McDowell has looked sharp from the pocket, which is a huge key to success for Montana offensively. Five for five to start in the passing department for McDowell. Yet to lose a game as a starting quarterback for Montana. We tell you he's been well traveled. That would be an understatement. Ten in maroon and white has been everywhere for landing in Missoula. And on second and short, it'll be first and goal for the Grizz. The tackle by Tucker Large, and here comes Montana. Well, it's just a great read by Clifton McDowell. Isaiah Stallbridge coming off the edge on a blitz. He holds it, holds it, holds it, finally pulls it when Stallbridge gets there and gets out in the open field. Power set with Gilman. 12th play of the drive coming up for Montana. Back shoulder toss and that pass errant and out of bounds. Well behind his intended target. And over there it was Aaron Fonts. Those two not on the same page. McDowell expecting Fonts to recognize that, that the defensive back is in phase, throws it back shoulder, Fonts not expecting it. Some of that has to do with the quarterback that just got here over the summertime. Not as many reps as you would normally have for your starter with the starting receivers.
Gilman. Tried to cut it outside and could not get there. Dyshawn Gales, an incredible play in the open field. Among the accolades for this defense, they are the best defense in the entire country in the red zone. Great physicality by Dyshawn Gales coming up and slamming down the running back. Just to give you some context, only 19 times out of 32 trips to the red zone has a team scored on this Jackrabbits defense. The best team in FBS was at 67%. This South Dakota State defense, 59% on the year letting team score. Light in motion on third and goal, and here's McDowell. Steps up in the pocket. What does he want? He'll carry it. Leapfrogging ahead and stopped just short of the goal line inside the one. Matthew Durance upended him, and now fourth and goal from around the one-yard line. Another decision for Coach Howe. Yeah, I mean, I think if you went for it before in the middle of the field, you go for it here on the one-yard line. The question is, during that spin, does he? Does the ball ever cross the plane? It's a good call by the officials. Ball never gets there. I think the spot's right. 15 minutes in the books, two possessions. It'll be fourth and goal to begin the second quarter. 7-0 our score. We'll return with more. The FCS Championship after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Coach, what goes into this decision right here? I can't hear you. Go what goes into this decision right here? Oh, it's easy. We're inside the one. In the play call, how do you decide? Well, we have certain things we practice for a couple of weeks, and we'll, you know, we'll go with one of them. Uh, um, we've thrown the ball here some. We've run it a lot, so hopefully they're going to have to defend both. Thank you, Coach. Roy? On fourth and goal, Gilman stopped right at the goal line and stopped short by Adam Bach. The rule on the field is the runner was short to the line to the goal line. Fourth down. That's what the best defense in America looks like on fourth and goal. They've given up only one touchdown in the last 35 possessions in the playoffs. What an individual play. Give the ball to Gilman. Does the ball ever cross the plane? When he's on, as Bach rolls over, when he's on top of Bach, I think the ball gets very close. Other shot's going to probably be the best one we have. He does not go down initially until he rolls over on the other side of Adam Bach. This will certainly be something that our replay officials will take a look at. They do review every play, so even if the game isn't stopped, they are certainly taking a look. Jack Rabbit's offense back on the field. They'll snap the ball with no review. Wide open is Yonke, and Jaden Yonke slides in safely with a reception across the 15-yard line and a 15-yard gain. That was an amazing sequence if you're a fan of the Jacks. Uh, um, amazing indeed, and, and Bernowski's going to be kicking himself because if he keeps that ball off the ground, Yonke's got a lot of room to run, and only Ronald Jackson to beat. But a great play call to give them some breathing room off the goal line. Roddy, I still wanted another moment to take a look at that play too. in the booth. Yeah, I did too. Jackrabbits defense holds. The handoff of Mark Johnson. Plenty of real estate and close to another first down. Now Johnson established a career high in this game last year. 126 yards on the ground. The tackle by Lee, but a gain of 11 and another chain mover for the Jacks. Two chunk plays to start this drive after starting inside of their own one yard line. Now Mark Johnson gets overshadowed because of how good Isaiah Davis is. But he's been phenomenal spelling Davis in stretches. And he's a guy that looks like he's going to be a thousand yard rusher for this Jacks team at some point. So to start the second quarter, fourth and goal from inside the one. Montana comes up short, thanks to Adam Bach. And now the Jackrabbits on the move until that interception. It is picked off by the Grizzlies' Corbin Walker. Late penalty marker flies in. But Montana gets the football back in a rare mistake toss by Mark Ranowski. Rare indeed. Only the fifth interception he's thrown all year long. Just did not see the corner fall off the post back to that wheel. A great play by Corbin Walker. And how about the momentum swing? After getting stopped on the one yard line, inside the one yard line, this defense comes up with a massive play. 
during the return of legal block in the back for 15 of the return team. 15 yard, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, the block in the back will back it up. Walker, first team all big sky, records his third interception of the season. 7 0, the defending champions in front of Montana, the one versus the two, and Corbin Walker, impressive, Roddy. And Corbin Walker reads the eyes of Mark Gronowski as he goes back to the wheel. This Montana offense with new life after getting stopped inside the one. This last interception, a great play by Corbin Walker. It's a simple post-wheel concept where the outside receiver converts it to a curl and then Jaden Yonke is up the sideline on a wheel. Corbin Walker looks like he's impressed, bails immediately, and when that outside receiver stops, he does a great job of reading the eyes of Gronowski, getting back outside to that wheel route. A great interception and a big momentum swing for Montana. He was playing center field in that sunshine. The third pick of the season is second in the FCS playoffs, the last one occurring against Delaware. Meanwhile, Montana, after the block in the back penalty, sets up shop at the 33 of the Jacks. Clifton McDowell back on the field with Eli Gilman. Nick Osmo and Isaiah Childs. Osmo! And the near side run, driven down to the 25. Montana's been tricky to start a gain of eight for the senior. And the, the big defensive tackle, Quentin Hicks, gets out in the alley and makes that play. I mean, there's not many defenses where that doesn't go for a massive chunk gain if your defensive end is the one getting out to make the tackle. Quentin Hicks does a nice job of preventing that for going for a lot more. Xavier Harris and Osmo in the backfield, and it's Harris to the left side. Harris breaks a tackle. Driven out of the 14. Montana, another first down. They've been executing the game plan really well, testing South Dakota State out on the perimeter. When you feel good about your skill, get away from all the trash on the inside and make one man make a tackle on one of your guys. They've done that really well, and it's why they've been able to move the ball down the field. Osmo, the lone running back, with McDowell, the quarterback. Three minutes into the second quarter, toss sweep, and Osmo barrels his way down to the 13. Short pickup, Tucker Large was ready, and Loom Large on that play. <laughs> I see what you did there. Tucker Large, really good player for this SDSU defense, one of their best cover players as well. For Montana, as the ball, as the, as the field constricts, and you figure out a way to finish this drive. Empty set, and you wonder if McDowell becomes a factor on the ground at some point on this possession. Bergen motions out. McDowell comes the other way. Keelan White brought down quickly. Right at the line is Jason Freeman. Started his career at the NAIA level. Overlooked and undersized, and he has been ultra productive in Brookings. Incredibly productive. And now Montana offensively. First and foremost, you have to protect Clifton McDowell. But secondly, what can you scheme up to get someone open down here in the high red zone? There's one of three on third down. McDowell in zone. That front pylon and broken up. Well, for a moment, he had Fonts breaking open. Miles Taylor with the coverage. And he was on top of that play from the snap. South Dakota State loves its ability to go man-to-man -man across the board with the corners, the nickels. They do an excellent job. And that time, it's just a great job Miles Taylor playing the football. Nico Ramos has been perfect inside of 40 yards this season. He is the shorter distance place kicker for the Grizz. From 30 yards out on that right hash, and Ramos bangs it through. 10.51 to go in our first half, 7-3. to three. But Montana on the board here in Frisco.
They're playing for the hardware here in Frisco. The national championship, the FCS. Glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon. SDSU rocking to start. And a seven to three advantage in the one versus the two. These two programs have combined to win 38 consecutive games coming into this championship today. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor. Montana two trips into the red zone against the Jackrabbits, just three points to show for it. And the nation's top ranked scoring defense has been a story to start. Roddy, it does feel like perhaps the Grizz survived that opening storm launched by the Jackrabbits. And Wilty tripped up crossing the 25. And Mark Ronowski back on the field. When we come back, the Walter Payton Award winner just threw an interception. He'll try to bounce back. South Dakota staying with a 7-3 advantage here in the second quarter as we welcome you back here to Frisco and welcome in the NCAA president, Charlie Baker, because earlier this week ESPN announced that for eight more seasons they will be partnering with the NCAA to broadcast all sorts of sporting events, including the FCS championship on ABC for eight more seasons. This is your first time to this game. What do you think of this atmosphere? Look, I think this is, I was told this is a great place to play in and watch a football game. And it absolutely is. Frisco's been a terrific host for maybe 15 years now. And I'm looking forward to having a great championship here today. This will be a good one. We appreciate you being here, and thanks for joining us on the broadcast. Roy? T-Mac, thank you. Here's Isaiah Davis out of the timeout. Spun down at the line. No gain. It was Braxton Hill. That new media deal being announced here within the last couple of days, and this FCS championship will be on ABC. Duration of said contract, and boy, it's great. You can feel the energy here at Toyota Stadium, and Frisco steps away from the world headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys. And it just feels right in this venue once again. Second down and 10. Gronowski. With a crease and a first down, Mark Gronowski into Montana territory, still on his feet to the 40. Jana Carroll able to latch on at the last minute. It's a gain of 33 on the ground. Look, it was a hole the size of Texas, and Isaiah Davis leads through. He's looking for someone to block because the left side of this offensive line just opens up a massive lane. But how about 22 getting down the field? Finishing a safety and allowing Mark Gronowski to have the big game. Love that call early in a drive. The co-offensive players of the year in the Missouri Valley Football Conference orchestrating that run. Two players also participated in high school basketball for a number of years, competitive in that arena. It's about a season ago when they elected to stay off the hardwood. Gronowski nearly spun down and heaves it out of bounds. Well, an athletic play to avoid the sack. Riley Wilson had a golden opportunity. His ninth sack of the season couldn't go around the quarterback. 42 Riley Wilson is the guy in pass rush situations that Montana likes to rely on. He's athletic. He's got bend. A really great move with his hands against the right tackle, John O'Brien. The strength of Gronowski avoids complete disaster. But Riley Wilson doing a nice job winning a one on one battle in that defensive line to get in the backfield. Outside of the tackle box, that was one of the reasons no intentional grounding. Three-man front for the Grizz. They line up in a 3-3-5, but it is far from normal in that regard. Davis lays the lumber. And caroming out of bounds near the 36-yard line. That was Garrett Graves on the wrong end of that collision. It'll be third down. You mentioned the 3-3-5 that this Montana Grizz defense lines up in. Their success is predicated because they're a little undersized on movement, and they're so sharp in their movement, they're going to send guys from all over the place. Last couple third downs, the last one they sent pressure, and Gronowski was able to scramble. So far, South Dakota State, two for two on third down. Jackrabbits need seven. Gronowski, quarterback run, no. Stop near the line of scrimmage. 
Aiden Harris able to sniff that one out. Ryan Tyrrell. I think this is a little too far if you're South Dakota State to go for it here. It's fourth and about seven. So I think you play the field position game. They're sending the punt team out. I agree with Jimmy Rogers' decision. Well, analytics, our analytics told you fourth and seven or less would be a go. I like the Rogers lytics here. Punt the ball, play a little field position. Punting with the sun in Junior Bergen's eyes. Out of the range of Hunter Dustman, who also handles hunting duties for the Jackrabbits. Rare kicker that executes both on special teams for one team. And Dustman sends that one out of bounds beautifully at the five. Grizz get it back when we come back to Frisco. Well, the Grizz have been living right, going back to back-to-back -back overtime wins to reach Frisco in the championship. Take it back to December 16th, Eli Gilman, a 13-yard run in overtime against North Dakota State, and then Junior Bergen happens, the two-point conversion to Keelan White. North Dakota State comes up empty. And to our friends in Fargo, a difficult loss to stomach. Bobby Howe, hands in the air. What a game, an all-time classic, hugging within head coach Matt Inns. We mentioned the two overtime victories to reach the FCS championship here just north of Dallas. Grizz get it back, trailing by four. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor. Sun is out in Frisco on this Sunday. Eli Gilman bullies his way ahead. From the five, he'll reach the eight. He's been able to get the ball on the perimeter some. Junior Bergen's not in the game now. He's trotting back in for this play. I try and get five the ball. Get him the ball in space. We already saw what he could do on the opening kickoff. Creating great field position for Montana's offense on their first possession. I try and get him the ball. Second leading wide receiver. You know the damage he can do on special teams. Expect to see him bid today quarterback. And a penalty from Brandon Casey. We have the distance. Start. Number 66, offense, half the distance, still second down. Gary Leeper indicating that is a false start. I have to be a lip reader. No, he's calling it on 66 on the offense. It's not on the same page as the rest of the offensive line. I would be a little jittery as well facing SDSU's defensive front. And Bobby Howe talked with us this week about the size differential. and. How you try to exploit that differential, not easy to do. Competitive game to start for the Grizz. First appearance in the title affair since 2009. McDowell retreats, looking for White. And they will call that a catch for a short gain. It'll be third down. It's a great job by Keelan White on the back end of bringing that in. It's a really nice job, Clifton McDowell as well. I mean, they turn Cade Turvier Scott Free for a free hit on the quarterback, and he's still able to complete it. Third and seven. Gilman racing out. McDowell fires at his direction. That should be enough to move the chains. Gilman broke open. McDowell in stride and a gain of nine for a first down. It's a really nice recognition that it's man-to-man -man coverage and that Savion Williamson standing in the middle of the field lined up over the center as the middle linebacker had Eli Gilman in man-to-man -man coverage. Gilman was lined up over the tackle. You had Williamson lined up basically over the center. You've already got him leveraged. Toss the ball out, get the first down. Rada, you wonder when will it be Junior Bergen time for the Grizz. Not an offensive touch yet. McDowell's going to keep it. That's where he can do a bulk of his damage. Close to the 20. Don't forget, NCAA championship coverage continues in March with the men's and women's indoor track and field championship. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. You want to see more Clifton McDowell on the ground, maybe to get out of this poor field position. I think what they're doing is fine, to be honest with you. Now, how do they create explosive plays? I think it's the big question, but they've been pretty efficient offensively so far. Hans motioned out of the backfield. McDowell with traffic all around him, looking for Bergen. 
Taylor? Clifton McDowell is dealing with an injury to his right leg. You can tell he's limping on it a little bit. He came to the sideline prior to this offensive series, and he had trainers work on it. He then got on the bike. He's been massaging it out, clearly still in this game, but just something to know and pay attention to. Yeah, and that last run, the design quarterback run, it didn't – it looked like he was a little gimpy. See if he's able to move in the pocket if SDSU is able to get any pressure. Bergen lines up in the slot. Bottom of the screen. Third down and eight. McDowell pocket collapsing, and so does Clifton McDowell. Sacked at the 13, and a loss of six. And it was a race to the quarterback that time as the offensive line came from the interior. Really, what kind of came from everywhere? A lot of the pressure came from the left side. You're going to see the two defensive tackles, two defensive line players cross the faces of the offensive guard and tackle, and then you get pressure off the edge. The thing is, with those wide splits, it can be tough to cut those defensive linemen off. Hey, Turvier. According to sack that time, that may have touched a jackrabbit. Ball pops out, and who has it? Grizz say they do. And they do. The second turnover for SDSU. And Eric Barker able to jump on it to recover the fumble. Well, it's just misfortune and a little bit unlucky for South Dakota State. The punt ends up being short. It bounces up and hits the back of number 23, Matthew Durance, who actually had a big play earlier in the playoffs against Villanova, blocking a punt and returning it for a touchdown. But it bounces up and hits him in the back. He knows it immediately. They try and scramble, but Montana gets the right bounce of the football and ends up recovering. Second recovery for Montana. Last seven games of a fumbled football. Brand new life for the Grizz. Nearing the end of this first half and approaching four to play. Osmo straight ahead, a full head of steam and stopped at the 49. So a five yard pickup, and let's see if Montana's ground game can get going. And, and Roy, I mean, we saw that, that South Dakota State offense for the vast majority of the first quarter, it felt like. And it feels like we haven't seen them much since, which bodes well for Montana. They've had multiple bites at the apple. They've been able to move the ball at times. But I think you have to take advantage of a first half where South Dakota State has had some uncharacteristic turnovers and giving you extra opportunity. Four-man pressure. Empty backfield for McDowell. Cross the middle. Junior Bergen. First catch in the SDSU territory. And a gain of 12. Uh, this is Clifton McDowell at his best in the pocket. Clean pocket, sees it well, in-breaking route. Junior Bergen right behind the linebackers, fires that in before the safety's able to get there. Really great offensive football by Montana. Was an All-State quarterback in high school. Also All-State on the hardwood in basketball for Junior Bergen. Dynamic athlete, a difference maker so far. He'll get it again. And the far side toss driven out by Dallas Beatum. So the second grab for Bergen and a penalty marker on the play. Let's see what happens. Holding number 76 offense, 10 yard penalty, still first down. Journey Grimsrud is the guilty party instead of a Completion of six yards, the penalty backs him up 10. Yeah, it's a really tough penalty. It has nothing to do with the play, but just slings the defensive lineman down. Look at his number 52, Jerry DePriest. Unfortunate for Montana, way behind the sticks now. now. The biggest play so far in this first half, fourth down and goal, Adam Box stopping Eli Gilman from inside the one yard line. Montana gets the ball first in the second half. I think you're thinking clock here, too, if you're Montana, trying to get this as close to halftime as you can. Three timeouts remaining, approaching two to go in the half. McDowell directing traffic and trying to spot Fonts. Passes high and incomplete. And coverage was Tucker Large. You wonder how much that leg is bothering him. There was a lot of room for him to take off and run. Would have been one-on-one -on -one with Isaiah Stahlberg 
a little bit down the field, but there's probably five to seven yards that were gimme yards. So you wonder how much of that leg is bothering him. Well, McDowell's story, he began his college football career at Louisiana, transferred to Kilgore Junior College. Central Arkansas was committed to Southern before a May trip to Missoula last year. Allowed him to flip that commitment to the Grizz. Never lost as a starting quarterback. He'll buy some time and throw it into the turf. With pressure coming and Osmo in the area. Third down and 20. South Dakota State did a great job of sniffing out that screen. And now, Montana, it's third and forever. A little over two minutes left. I'm sure you just don't take it and hand the ball off. Try and pull a timeout from Jimmy Rogers in South Dakota State. But I think you know, you're playing conservative here. Last thing you need is a turnover. And your point about the Grizz getting the football to start the second half would make some sense there as well. We're down in 20, and they'll stop this play before it starts in a timeout called by Montana. 7 to 3 our score 202 remaining time out first half in Frisco Montana. first time out of the half four point lead for the defending national champions but two first half turnovers have given Montana some new life the interception recorded by Corbin Walker and then the fumble that was recovered by Barker reserve tied in for the Grizz number 88 and maroon and white and we don't see a lot of this for a team that's won 28 games in a row no we don't only three turnovers in their last six games coming in obviously two today and only turned the ball over 11 times all season including the playoffs they've been phenomenal taking care of the football but montana's had some extra opportunities time package on the field for the sdsu jackrabbits on third and 20. And McDowell would like to get some of that yardage to give his head coach Bobby Houck an option instead. Scurry's out of bounds. SDSU territory near the 46. So a gain of just three. Lock will stop with a buck 58 to go. And it's hard to tell your quarterback all of the situational stuff going on, but on that one, you'd love for him to stay in bounds. You're not going to get the first down. So with 158, you go out of bounds, and obviously under two minutes now, clock remains stopped. Had he stayed inbounds, and either the clock is running, South Dakota State has to use a timeout, or they run it down, you know, below 130. Number one. Travis Benham runs it away. For the Grizz, and a fair catch made at the 12, a punt of 33. Mark Radowski on the field when we return to Frisco. Well, it was almost one year ago to the day back here inside of Toyota Stadium. Isaiah Davis got the scoring barrage started for the Jackrabbits. 7 nothing early against North Dakota State. Mark Ranowski, the MVP of the afternoon from 51 yards out in the third quarter. That extended the advantage for the Jacks to 24. And then Ranowski to Jackson Yonke. The final margin, 45-21. John Stigelmeyer goes out on top for passing the reins to Jimmy Rogers in 2023. First national championship. The Jackrabbits trying to go back to back. And Gronowski, a clean pocket across the middle, wide open. Jackson Yonke in a first down. Jacks do have all three timeouts remaining. Corbin Walker, the tackle, a gain of 18. They've got plenty of time. Mark Gronowski does a nice job of pumping short to Zach Hines and allows Jackson Yonke to get him behind. Gronowski looking comfortable in the face of pressure late, fires it out of bounds. That should be intentional grounding. Inside the tackle box, it appeared from our perspective. Let's bring in Matt Austin, our rules expert. Matt, what did you see? Yeah, I think Roddy's exactly right. He was definitely in the tackle box. I did not see a receiver anywhere in the area. I don't think there was a receiver in the area code. And the penalty marker comes out. Intentional grounding. Number 11, offense. No receiver in the area, and the passer was not outside the quarterback. Foul, loss of down. 
third down. Gary Leeper, second down. The Southland South Conference, conference with that call. Second down and 18. No 10 second runoff under a minute, of course. We're at 93 seconds to go. We'll see how that changes the complexion of this possession at the end of the half. Four point game. Mark Johnson over the right side. Spun down. And for a gain of a half yard by Riley Wilson. Who wants to call a timeout at this juncture? No one. I, I think if you're South Dakota State, you're letting this thing run down as far as possible, calling a timeout, and then figuring out what you want to do on third down. Now, South Dakota State runs the ball in this third down play and they get stopped. Montana is absolutely calling a timeout to make them punt the ball away and potentially give Junior Bergen a chance at this, but you got to come up with a stop here. Less than a minute to go. Grizz have two timeouts remaining. Jacks with all three. And it's Johnson again over the right side. Humble down across the 35 by Meyer. 13 on the play. And a timeout for the Grizz. Number 13, so 45 timeout seconds the remaining field. in the half. 30 second timeout. Montana. 13 yard second game makes that timeout a little more iffy, I think, if you're Montana. I certainly don't think SDSU is going to go for it, but they're probably six feet from being in an area where they might they might think about it. Good old analytics. Don't forget, number one Michigan takes on number two Washington. The college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. It's tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN from NRG Stadium in H-Town. We'll have pregame coverage all day. We'll have you covered for the game on every platform, TV, radio, and digital. So many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. Junior Bergen's going to have an opportunity potentially to return this. Montana likes the left side walls in their returns. Top punt returner the FCS ranks this year. Battle the Sun. Cuts it back and out of bounds at the 15. So a punt of 53 yards, a return of six. You have to imagine Bobby Howe probably not going to get too crazy this deep in his own territory at the end of the half. No, I would imagine not. I think down four with the ability to take it to halftime, I think you probably do that. Regroup. And you come out with a plan to punch the ball in the end zone. I mean, this team is inches away from being up 10-3 to at this point in time. That fourth down stop inside the one-yard line looming large. Adam Bach, the senior linebacker. Bringing down Eli Gilman, inches away. A potential game-tying touchdown. Dow will throw it, get it to Drew Deck. And stopped at the 21 by Jason Freeman. Clock moving. Three-man front, three safeties on the field for the Jackrabbits. With a seam and a completion to Aaron Fonts. I think you go ahead and you call a timeout. You got unless you're trying to get up and spike it. The clock winds down. Grizz with one timeout remaining. They won't use it here. Second reception for Deck. Stopped at the line of line to gain, rather. Let's see. Lock the tackle on a timeout call. Timeout. University of Montana, final timeout of the half, 30 seconds. Now, well, speaking of tomorrow night, don't forget our mega cast Please coverage of the, the National game Championship game presented by AT&T. Number one, Michigan, second ranked Washington tomorrow night. Got you covered on every platform, TV, radio, digital. So many ways to watch and listen. The biggest game of the year. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern. Got the Michigan Hometown Radio broadcast, the Washington Hometown broadcast. Got the halftime band performance if you want, but Michael Penix Jr., what a playoff performance we saw in the semis, and J.J. McCarthy right there with him. We haven't had to, situations where J.J. McCarthy had to come up with big plays in the clutch, but he certainly did that. 
in a classic Rose Bowl. Three seconds and I'm not sure I've seen a performance all year long as good as what Michael Penix was in the Sugar Bowl. Not only his ability to throw with accuracy, the ability to avoid sacks, reset, deliver the football. He is absolutely tremendous. The deep ball precision, immaculate for the Pac-12 champions. In the final play of the half, McDowell surveys. Arm strength on display to the goal line and intercepted. It was picked off. Jack Rabbits have it. And Dallas beat him, racing back to the 35 before he's tackled there. Now the fifth interception of the season for Beatham to wrap up an entertaining first 30 minutes. But it, it was a shot there for the Montana receivers. It's a nice job of getting to an opportunity to heave one in the end zone. And I think Bobby Hack will feel pretty good about where his team is going into halftime. Seven to three, our score. We'll return with more of the FCS championship after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Seven to three, our score will get you to the studio after this short break with Matt Berry, Booger, and Coach Mullen. And welcome back to the NCAA FCS championship inside of Toyota Stadium, Frisco, Texas. We got two quarters in the books, and the number one seed, the defending national champion, South Dakota State, leading Montana by a score of seven to three. Well, 19,000 plus on hand here it was a great atmosphere in our first half. Welcome back to our broadcast position. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Taylor McGregor joins us on the sidelines in just one minute. And look, Montana has a chance. They came in as a heavy underdog. They found a way to keep it close. A couple of turnovers by SDSU. Let's see what the second half looks like. Yeah, it was sort of the what we drew up for Montana, their recipe to success, creating some turnovers. They had a big return to get them going before their first drive. They've been able to move the ball down the field. Now it's going to be about punching the ball in the end zone. And the other side, for South Dakota State, they got to quit shooting themselves in the foot. They had an intentional grounding on that last drive of the first half that sort of derailed what could have been a potential scoring drive. I mean, obviously the turnovers hurt. Grizz get the football to start our third quarter. And Bergen ahead to the 24. We'll take a look at our first half highlights. Mark Gronowski got things going early for the Jacks. Their opening possession, Roddy, ends in the touchdown for Zay Davis, his 18th of the season. Yeah, it was a long drive to start for the Jackrabbits that they were able to punch in. But Montana responded after a big return by Junior Bergen. Clifton McDowell on a third down play gets them on the doorstep of scoring. But a great play by the middle linebacker Adam Bach to keep Eli Gilman out of the end zone is really the play of the first half. Really. Fourth and goal from the one, and Bach found a way, the senior linebacker out of Iowa. Grizz having to start our third quarter. A quick strike to the tight end, Evan Schaefer, and we check in with T-Mac. We have to stop pressing. That is what head coach Jimmy Rogers of South Dakota State told me. He feels like pressing has led to some of the turnovers, and he said you will see an adjustment from our offensive line to better pick up some of the blitzing from Montana. And as for Bobby Houck, he said Clifton McDowell has to be better utilizing his legs. They feel like they have an advantage in the plus-one run game when he does that, so look for that here in the second half. And yeah, we'll also keep an eye on that right leg. Appeared to be a little banked up for a moment. Gilman on second and short. Hit crossing the line to gain by Freeman. It was hit hard, but that is enough to move the chains. Early in this game, in the traditional run game, they did a great job of taking advantage of the aggressiveness of this SDSU defensive line. Cutting back against the grain. Jason Freeman, their outstanding linebacker, a little shaken up after that play. Gilman and Harris joining McDowell in the backfield. After picking up the first down, Dow crossed the middle, and Bergen bending backwards across the 40 to the 41, a gain of six. Montana's never lost to SDSU, 8-0 all-time against the Jackrabbits. They haven't met since 2015. Grizz a power, the FCS ranks, winning that first national championship in 1995. Another one in 2001. SDSU on the verge with a win today of, Roddy, what was the word you utilized in our open? That'd be a dynastic run for SDSU. Yeah, perhaps starting a North Dakota State type run, back-to-back -back national titles. Slant route is there, and that'll be a first down for Aaron Fonts. Ball came out 
late. Did they mark him down? The initial indicator is that he was down for a gain of 14 yards by Fonts. And so for the time being, the ball remains with the Grizz and an injured Jackrabbit near the 39. I think that ball's moving before he hits the ground. I mean, he is hit extremely hard, and that really ball starts to move down, before he hits the ground. That's going to be out. a fumble for Montana. And you had a clear and obvious recovery by South Dakota State. So this is going to be a massive momentum shift. Caden Johnson. Injured player. That last play will be reviewed as well. Two minutes into our second half and a lot to unpack when we return to Frisco. 7-3 our score. Montana with the football on the move for the time being. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpont, Taylor McGregor, our rules expert Matt Austin joins us. And Matt, tell us what you see here. This could be a fumble. I, I agree. That ball was definitely coming loose before he got his knee on the ground. Then it spun away as he did get to the ground. Definitely there was an immediate recovery by the defense. Uh, this should be overturned to a turnover. Ryan Williams forced the fumble, Roddy, before Aaron Fonts was able to make clear contact with the turf. SDSU recovers. Really not a lot of gray area there, right? No, I don't think there's any gray area at all. The question is how much time's on the clock and where you spot in the football. That's really what you have to figure out because I think after that first look, you know it's a fumble. Dyshawn Gales, as Matt said, immediate recovery after that ball hits the ground. So I think you're just trying to figure out logistics at this point. Call the field was that the runner was down. It's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. I don't know about you, but that appeared to be indisputable video evidence. Well, you're not getting any dispute from anybody on this crew. <laughs> A replay official, Rodney Johnstone. And here's Gary Leeper. After a review, the ruling on the field has been changed to a fumble recovered by South Dakota State. First down at the 44-yard line. Grizz turn it over. An enormous charge of momentum in favor of the Jackrabbits, the defending champs, to begin our second half. Yeah, and now you need your defense to once again come up with a big stop. I think it's a lot of what Montana has to do over the course of this game, because they are up against the juggernaut, you got to keep them in within striking distance. So we'd love to come up with a big stop. Taylor talked Jimmy Rogers about the play of the offensive line for the Jacks. Say it, Davis. That's it back against the grain and barrels across the 45. A gain of five. John Cotton with a tackle. Only five carries for Isaiah Davis in the first half. Love them going to him to start the second half. Get your big running back, co-offensive player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Get him involved. And let him put his mark on this game. Zach Lujan, offensive play caller for the Jacks, told us on Davis, nobody is going to outwork Isaiah Davis. You sit down with him, you talk to him, you certainly believe that quickly. Physical specimen. And yeah, brought down at the 49. He has scored the only touchdown in this game as well as the Jacks got off to a great start that opening possession. Their opening drive was tremendous. 11 plays, 75 yards. It's been tough sledding ever since. Montana's been good on third downs. They've created turnovers, had some unforced errors from South Dakota State, the intentional grounding being one of those. Now here on third and short, Gronowski's leg's huge. I think this is going to Isaiah Davis, and usually when they need yardage, they go behind the two All-Americans on the left side of that offensive line. NFL potential on that side of the offensive line for the Jacks. And Davis trying to find a lane, and I don't think so. Needed two, stopped at the line. It'll be fourth down and two, no gain on the play, and it was Tyler Flink that met him right at the line of scrimmage, Roddy. Well, and they run a twist, the two Defensive lineman on the left side slant down. Alex Gubner creates the penetration by looping around. That forces Isaiah Davis wider than he wanted to go. But the movement of Montana once again gives South Dakota State's offensive line some trouble. Alex Gubner right in the middle of it. They come up with a massive third and short stop. 
three and out for SDSU after getting the fumble recovery with Montana on the move. So the defense for the Grizz showed up here in Frisco in a major way. Clifton McDowell back on the field when we come back in a four-point game in the FCS championship. Sunsplash Sunday afternoon back in Frisco, Texas, here the home of the FCS National Championship. And our thoughts and prayers remain with our friends in Missoula, remembering one of the all-time greats. Don Reed passed away last Wednesday, four days short, watching the Grizz compete for another national championship at the age of 90. And Bobby Howe talking about Coach Reed and everything that he meant at Montana, now in his 13th season as the head coach in Missoula. And Grizz wearing the helmet stickers, DR today, which you can imagine their hearts have been heavy since learning of the news last week, Roddy. Yeah, tremendous football life for Coach Reed, what he did for this program, and his team playing inspired today. Playing the first national championship for the school in 95. Second title in 2001. Adam Bach the stop. Incredible win against Marshall. Flew that 1995 campaign, 13 and 2 that year, and then six years later, head coach Joe Glenn directed the Grizz to the win in Chattanooga against Furman by a touchdown. Dow escaping pressure on second and long. We'll get what he can. And shoved out hard by Adam Bach. I love, I love. Clifton McDowell there using his legs, but I'd love to see him make that decision sooner. As soon as you avoid that first sack, take off and go. Don't let the linebackers have any time to recover. That would have been a first down if he decided to go right away. Now you've got a third and medium. Roddy's done a good job today avoiding the big mistake. Can he make a play down the field at some point? And the pass on this land is incomplete. There was a lot of contact with Tucker Large. But he ripped it away from Junior Bergen at the last minute. There was a lot of contact. Couldn't quite see whether or not that left arm was wrapped around Junior Bergen as he came around, but bang, bang, play. No call by the official. Number 20 is Travis, Travis Benham trots on the field, and maybe a skosh early. It was close. SDSU should have outstanding field position after forcing the three and out. After the Grizz forced a three and out. After the fumble recovery by the Jacks. That'll take a Grizz hop all the way down to the 42. Mark Ranowski take over from there. Don't forget our Super Tuesday basketball doubleheader. Antonio Reeves, number six Kentucky, fresh off the comeback in Gainesville against Florida yesterday. We'll welcome Mizzou to town. That's at Rupp Arena at 7 Eastern. Then Kyle Filipowski and number 14 Duke take on Blake Henson and Pitt. Both games over on ESPN and also on the app. College basketball returns in a major way as league play is underway around the country. But we have two more football games left to conclude the national championship tomorrow in Houston and the FCS national title game here today in Frisco. Gronowski with time, fires a strike, and the pass caught by Jaden Yonke. Spun down to the 49 by Ryder Meyer in a gain of seven. The big thing that stands out is there has not been a single drive since that first one that's lasted longer than five plays. Montana's done a really nice job of creating negative plays and coming up with some timely stops. Well, I think if you're South Dakota State, you want to get Isaiah Davis involved more, but also staying on schedule, the biggest thing. You wonder when Jackson Yankee could get involved. Penalty marker. It appeared to be a tunnel screen. His twin brother, Jaden. The Southland officiating crew will Converse for a moment. Offside, number 56, defense, causing a reaction by the offense. Penalty results in a first down. It's Garrett Husted. Well, a free first down for SDSU. You wonder if this may be a time to try to take a shot. Not a bad time. Certainly. I haven't really tested 
Montana deep. Yeah, the one time they threw it down the field, it got intercepted on the wheel. An interception by Corbin Walker. I like where your head's at there, right? A little shot action this past midfield. Davis and Johnson on the field. Amar Johnson will test the left side with a stiff arm and driven down quickly. Positive gain on first down. Give him five yards. Johnson with the career day last year in this game. The second time we've seen Isaiah Davis. Excuse me. Third time we've seen Isaiah Davis to lead blocker twice for Amar Johnson and once for Mark Gronowski. Love the unselfishness from a guy who's rushed for over 1,400 yards this season. Quinton Christensen checks in as a tight end. Michael Morgan, the fullback. Davis off the field. Johnson remains on. Jaden Yonke in motion. And it's play action. Gronowski wants the shot, and he'll take it. Double coverage and incomplete. Well, Yonke was open for a minute, and that play took forever to develop. And Ronald Jackson. Deep down the field in coverage, got a hand on it. The ball just kind of hangs up in the air. Jaden Yonke gets behind the defense, but it's so far that Ronald Jackson, the backside corner, has a chance to recover, and he doesn't believe that he got there in time. I mean, it's like he's surprised that he arrived and the ball was still coming, and he turned around. That's an interception in the end zone. Transfer from Akron. You wonder, too, about the sunshine and how that could impact yeah, plays on that side of the field. Although I do feel like the sun has moved back more behind us and not directly in the line of sight there. Big play on third and three. And here comes a flag. Oh, big call. It appears to be a false start. False start. Number 61. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Evan Burnson. So instead of third and three, it's third down and eight. Up to go to state. It only shows is their third penalty so far. One of those, though, the intentional grounding was really big. See number 61 leaning a little bit back in his stance. Montana, if you're able to get pressure, you have to be able to bring down Mark Gronowski. They've not been able to get to him. Has been kept clean so far. Here comes the heavy pressure. Gronowski escapes on the move. Hines has it. The massive tight end. Zach Hines upended near the 11. Ryder Meyer prevented the touchdown. How about a gain of 33 on third down and eight? Well, the tight end just keeps working. They send the blitz. Excellent job of picking it up, particularly by Isaiah Davis in the backfield. And then a really nice delivery by Mark Gronowski to Zach Hines for the big gain, and this is the area of the field where the tight end becomes a massive, massive weapon. 6'7", 260 pounds, the senior from Sioux Falls. A red zone weapon, to say the least. From the 10, he'll fake it to Davis. There goes Gronowski with a cut across the goal line for the touchdown. Roddy, nothing easy about that play, and Gronowski found a way to sneak across. I think it's just the play call where they tell Mark Gronowski, hey, if you don't like what you see, just take off and run. And he does that with maximum Time efficiency, being able to get into the end zone and extend this lead. Hayden Harris remains on the turf, injured for the Grizz. 13-3 after the Gronowski touchdown. And the Magic Man, Mark, working more of that magic just as he did in the third quarter last year in this game. The 51-yard touchdown against the Bison. And such a weapon with his experience. He's now thrown for over 3,000 yards this season. That production coming on this drive. And for the most part, you know he's going to play mistake-free football. We saw the one pick in the first half, but one of his first true mistakes in these playoffs. Yeah, and, and I think it's the experience and the decision making that sets him apart. There's obviously physical talent there, but his ability in that situation to make a quick decision that, hey, we're gonna take off and run. It just allows him to sort of catch the defense on their heels, and by the time they recover, there's a seam, and he's able to dive into the end zone. Harris still slow to get up, and he may have collided 
his own teammate a little friendly flyer, flyer rather as uh, Kronowski scoots across the goal line. Those knees above the turf. And Harris finally able to walk off the field under his own power. South Dakota State largely untested this season, tested in a major way so far this afternoon. And our dustman is connected on 66, 68 PATs this season. Make it number 67 in our new score with 7-11 to go in our third quarter, 14 to three. Started with this big third down conversion. Gronowski getting out of the pocket and delivering to Zach Hines. And then the Walter Payton Award winner for the best player in America extends the lead to 11. Our mega cast coverage of the national championship game presented by AT&T. Number one, Michigan. Number two, Washington. It is tomorrow night. We've got you covered on every platform imaginable. TV, radio, digital. So many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern. UW and the maize in blue for I mean, all the marbles. How many different screens are you going to have for that? I think I'm going to go four. I'm normally the quad box if I can. Multiple televisions. Garrett Graves going to bring it back. He stays on his feet. And he bangs ahead to the 26, and that'll be it. All right, Montana, they've really been stymied since that field goal was scored halfway through the second quarter. But this is a team, Roddy, that's probably not going to press the panic button. They're coming off back-to-back -back overtime wins in the playoffs. Those games were at home. This one is not. What do you want to see differently out of the Grizz offensively? Well, they had a really nice drive going before they turned the ball over first drive of the second half. I think the big thing for them, this is a crucial drive. I think the big thing is figuring out a way on the ground to get something going. They had success on the perimeter early in the game running the football. I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Eli Gilman, the running back. McDowell's going to keep it, and he's brought down for a loss of two. Brian Williams, a transfer from Valdosta State. Number 92 with a flex and a TFL. Oh, it's a really good arm over move to get away from the initial block. Splits a potential double team and is able to get into the backfield and get Montana behind the sticks. Said this a number of times, but Junior Bergen has not had enough touches for my liking in this game to find a way to get five the ball. On second down, pressure. McDowell escapes for a minute and then throws it in the ground. Isaiah Stahlberg. McDowell tried to race outside of the pocket. And we'll bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin, to see if that was intentional grounding, Matt. I certainly didn't see any receiver in the area. And once the quarterback is grabbed by the defender, it's up to him completely to get it near a receiver. Closer than normal. Right there, I don't see anybody close. I think that should be grounding. Intentional grounding. Number 13. Offense. Loss it down. Spot of the foul. Third down. And indeed, the infraction was called. Third down. And a long ways to go for the Grizz. And now Jimmy Rogers, the former defensive play caller, SDSU, the head coach, year number one. You wonder what he's thinking about at this point in time and perhaps bringing more pressure to McDowell. I mean, I, I think you're dropping eight, maybe even nine, and making McDowell throw it underneath and come up and make a tackle. Three-man front. There's the screen, Gilman. And yeah, they were waiting, sitting back. Kale Reeder, Tucker Large combined to make the tackle. He may have lost another yard or two. And SDSU swarming on that occasion. Just what the doctor ordered for the Jackrabbits is they've gotten a little bit of momentum. Defense comes up with a big stop. And now you're going to get your offense the ball back. The way the, the first quarter went, at this point, Montana you don't come up with a stop here when you get back on defense. I don't know if there's enough possessions in the game left. 
to be able to get back into it. We're just tuning in. Our first quarter saw exactly two possessions, and the second one did not end until the second quarter. Fourth and goal play, the biggest play of the game. Benham barely got that one away. Tucker Large will watch it bounce. And a Grizz bounce to the 41, a punt of 46. And well done by Benham, transfer from San Jose State. And this defense best in the country, giving up just 10 points per game. That was the play of our first half. It really was. Adam Bach not only securing the tackle, but also knocking down the ball. They've been able to get in the backfield to Clifton McDowell. The pursuit from the defensive lineman, Brian Williams, up the field causes the turnover by Aaron Fonts. But the ability to consistently harass Clifton McDowell in the backfield has not let 17 get comfortable, particularly when they've gotten behind the sticks. 14 to 3. It feels like a big moment in Frisco. We'll fake it to Davis. Gronowski wants to go long. Jaden Yonke with a catch. Well, the ball spun around a little bit late, and now they roll it incomplete. Roddy, he had possession for a moment, and then that ball started to shuffle around. Really on the field is an incomplete It's a pass. really good job by Trey John Cotton to be able to knock this ball out. But, Matt, what are we looking for as the receiver goes to the ground while making the catch? Well, you got to have to have firm control, a body part down, and maintain that control all the way to the ground. Um, I, I think any review here would stand. I mean, it does look like he's got control. It looks like they're still fighting for it on the ground, which could be considered a second act. But in this case, he, you just got to hang out of the ball. Yeah. The I, ball jostles loose after he hit the turf. I kind of I agree with, with Matt. Not kind of. I do agree. Looked like South Dakota State was waiting to give the officials as long as they could to Time take out. a look at this. South Dakota State, it's first time. Charge time out of the half. 30 but seconds in Very lead. close. I think if it's ruled a catch on the field, it stands. And, and But it, because it was ruled incomplete, I'm not sure you can overturn it. Well, that was a big call on the field. I mean, clearly, Jaden Yonke has it. He has control of it as he hits the ground. I, I think he maintains possession through hitting the ground, and then Trey John Cotton rips it out after he rolls over. I think it's much more a catch than not. I don't know if there's enough upon replay to overturn it. To the naked eye, it felt like a catch upon that replay sequence. To me, that looks like a catch. But the ball comes out after colliding with the turf and Cotton coming down on top of him. After all that, it's second and ten. And into the flats, Jackson Yonke. Going to record a first down into Montana territory. And a gain of 13. One of the things I love about this offense is how they use personnel to create space. You go with the tight end and a fullback, and it makes Montana go big, focus on the run. Well, what is it creates a one-on-one -on -one on the outside between Jackson Yonke and the defender, Trevin Gradney, and there's just so much space to work with that it's an easy pitch and catch. Yonke twins have been instrumental in SDSU's success the last three years. This time it's Isaiah Davis with a first down. And Davis skips out of bounds near the 27. That'll move the chains and a gain of 18 more for the Jackrabbits. It was the left guard, Mason McCormick, three-time team captain, All-American, that makes this one. Number 60 opens up a massive hole for Isaiah Davis to run through and then down the field. He's going to punish a defensive back. And Roddy, between Davis, Greenfield, McCormick, on the left side of that offensive line, those are names you're going to hear at the next level in the coming years. Yeah. Next level as in National Football League. Yeah, I think Isaiah Davis and Mason McCormick have big time futures at the next level. Power formation. Davis has it over right tackle brought down quickly. 
We check in again with Taylor McGregor. Well, you can tell that this South Dakota State offensive line is starting to get to Montana's D-line prior to this series. I could tell there was some frustration. Coaches telling players, look, you have to be able to flush some of the holding calls they feel like have not been called, but they feel like they deserve them. So that frustration starting to build, a stop for them would be good to sort of reset mentally. Let's see what happens. Certainly would. And you look at Alex Gubner's jersey and it's pulled up over the shoulder pad that wasn't done naturally so he didn't do that he, yeah i don't think so i don't think that's done for fashion you can see <laughs> why you would think he's been held a little bit davis motions out they'll set up the screen to Jaden yankee and a lot of activity results in a gain of a couple braxton hill the tackle so yankee picks up three and the yankee twins have been featured more on this drive the seniors were originally thought to be linebackers according to head coach jimmy rogers when they signed in Brookings. Third down and five. This feels like uh, more than just a play in the third quarter. This feels like a big turning point in this game, particularly if South Dakota State is able to convert. Johnson, the running back. Four-man front for the Grizz. There was movement. No penalty marker. In zone. Yonke! And this time, hauls it in for the touchdown. Jaden Yonke over Trajan Cotton. And from 23 yards out, here come the Jackrabbits. Thirty career touchdown grabs for Jaden Yonke. He's got 11 now in his last 11 games. Well, how about the response after the last time they ran this play, it was called incomplete because Trey John Cotton kept biting the end. Well, Jaden Yonke left no doubt on that one. Great pitch and catch. It bobbled the PAT. And the try is obviously no good, and the score remains 20 to 3. And it felt like John Bell just lost the handle, the holder. And there are the Yankee twins. And the two are like an old married couple from what we've been told. They stopped rooming together for the first time this year. Jaden now rooming with Mark Gronowski. Jackson had before. And they kind of get after each other, as you would expect brothers, and certainly twin brothers playing on the same team. Yeah, I mean, you, you spent your entire lives together. There's plenty of stuff to argue about. But what a play on the touchdown. And, and I commend South Dakota State for going back to that matchup. Obviously a mismatch with the nickel against one of your best receivers. The body control to be able to flip his hips, get back to that back shoulder throw, and the delivery by Mark Gronowski was spot on. Got the bobbled snap on the extra point. John Bell, 13 quarterback, is the holder there, and it felt like maybe he just lost the grasp as the snap zip backwards. All smiles for SDSU. Trying to go back to back. Garrett Graves again. And Graves with a burst. Spun down to the 35 after a return of 24. Jaden and Jackson Yonke. Jaden now with 30 reception touchdowns in his career. And Jackson with 29. So. Uh, there's going to be something to talk about in the years to come when they're done in Brookings about who actually was able to do what. And right now, advantage Jaden. Yeah, but game's not over. And it's been quite the career for these two guys. And they have made incredible impacts on this stage. I mean, Jackson had three touchdowns, or excuse me, two touchdowns last year here. Backside pressure, McDowell lost it. SDSU recovers. And the Jackrabbits get it back again. Going on field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, South Dakota State. Ryan Van Marl. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. The ball pops out right into the big mitts of old number 98. Brian Williams has been all over the place. Number 92, excuse me, that was number 94. Kay Turvier. Getting around, creating that pressure, knocking the ball out. This offense, defensive line has been incredibly disruptive, punching the ball out. Ball security wasn't there from the quarterback position, and it creates a big play. 
98 running with the ball in his hands like a natural ground gainer. I thought for a second we were going to be blessed with a big man touchdown. False start, number 60, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Mason McCormick will back him up five. And only for a moment does it feel like that slows down the mojo of SDSU on the verge here. I think if you're Zach Lujan, this might be a shot play right here. They're not going to expect it on a first and 15. You got Jaden Yonke feeling good. Jackson Yonke on the other side. I might try and land the haymaker here. Johnson the running back. He'll get it instead. And with a slight crease stopped by Braxton Hill. Well, Montana somehow, some way, has to find a way to either get the ball back or a quick stop as we get towards the end of our third quarter. Yeah, a field goal keeps it a three-score game. So I think at, at the bare minimum, you're hoping for that. You'd love for this defense to come up with more magic. They had the turnover earlier in the game, the interception they were able to force. See what they come up with. Bobby Howe talked with us this week about how SDSU just will start to lean on you when they get it going. The cutback by Yonke. And a sandwich of defenders brings him down to the 15. A gain of seven. It'll be third down. Tenacious blocking on the perimeter. Help create that big gain. Blocking by Jackson Yonke being able to Get some of those defensive backs out of the way. Give his brother Jaden some room. Now you're in a third. Very manageable. Time for Gronowski. In zone and high. And trying to spot Michael Morgan. Does have nine catches this season. And Gronowski felt that pressure. And Hunter Dustman. On the field to attempt a field goal. And he is connected on eight straight from inside of 40 yards. Number 10 took over the kicking duties. Season opening game against Iowa in 2022. It was the last loss by the Jackrabbits. He handles the punting duties and the place kicking. Just inside the right hash, a 32 yard attempt coming. Problems on the hole. Dustman had to stop and then start, and it does not matter. Quality, place kicking, under duress, the FCS National Championship. How about the calm nerves by the kicker? I mean, unbelievable. So we've got a uh, another kicker that also punted. How about the all-time leading scorer in the National Football League, Adam Vinatieri, Played with the Jacks from 91 to 94. A four-time Super Bowl winner. Three with the Patriots, one with the Colts. It's actually the most Super Bowl wins for a place kicker. Bit of a tradition there in Brookings. I don't it's, think you can credit Dustman enough there. There was nothing easy. As a former kicker. I was going to say, you know how, how much harder that is, how hard that is much better than I do. It's almost like if you're on the tee box attempting to hit a shot yep. with your driver, and you have to stop mid-swing, come back down and try to still hit Wait, it. Wait, you're not supposed to do that? Is that what you do? That's exactly why my swing is all, all you've, wrong. You've been hanging out with Charles Barkley. They have avoided kicking to Junior Berg in the last two kickoffs. I would, uh, I would continue to do that. Graves. Ended crossing the 20. 23 to 3. Grizz on offense in the last five possessions. Well, if you're a fan U of M, you may want to turn your head. It has not been pretty. Uh, not been pretty is probably an understatement. And I mean, it's time to get busy getting busy if you're the Montana offense. Offside on the kicking team. Five yard penalty to be added at the end of the run. First down. Offsides called Timeout. on the kicking Injury. team. They'll add five more yards to the return. Garrett Graves slow to get up. Eli, Eli, Eli. 
51 seconds remaining in our third quarter, a quarter that has been dominated by SDSU. Started with the fumble. Correction, South Dakota State has taken the option to re-kick. Graves just took an awkward tumble. Fortunate to hold on to the football. Finally, up on his feet. North Dakota State has taken the option to re-kick. I believe was the last announcement. Correction, the five-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff, and we'll re-kick. South Dakota State will yeah, re-engage. 20-point ball game. Still a three-score deficit if you are holding on to hope for the Grizz. Stranger things have happened, but against SDSU, the way they put the clamps on you defensively, it has been tough sledding in not only 2023, but 2022 and now 2024. And, and Montana has opted to put Eli Gilman back deep now with Junior Bergen. So now on the opposite side of Bergen, you have a little bit bigger threat to do some damage on a return. It's going to see what South Dakota State decides to do now with the starting tailback back there with Junior Bergen. Dustman approaching. High and short to Gilman at the 12. The freshman running back. Keep the play alive down to the 28, and that's it. Well, the governors are in the house for both sides. Christy Nome, governor of the state of South Dakota. Greg Gianforte, governor of the great state of Montana in the house. You like that kind of support today. Uh, you love it. Love to see it. Well, we were talking to some Grizz fans a little bit earlier, and they were talking about how proud the whole state is of this, of this Montana team. And obviously, South Dakota State getting over the hump last year after kind of hitting that wall of North Dakota State for so long. McDowell kept it, and the ball came out. He's able to secure it back on the turf, and an awkward gain of two. One thing that we have not seen Montana do that they said that they wanted to do was challenge the corners of South Dakota State. Better time to do it than now. Virtually zero production so far in the third quarter. That's a nice looking pass. Aaron Fonts steps out of bounds right near the line to gain. 14 seconds to go in our third quarter and the clock moving. Montana's last five possessions. Not many yards and three turnovers. Less than 50 to be exact. And our third quarter comes it's to a the close. The third quarter. Now 15 minutes to go in Frisco. Turnovers, a key factor in favor of SDSU. We'll return with more of the FCS Championship after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Coach, what was that at halftime to create this much of a momentum shift in the third quarter? It's just playing clean. I don't know if it's anything more than what we're doing, but just playing clean. Thank you. And Lisa Bright. T-Mac, Jimmy Rogers, a head coach, a man, a former linebacker, a few words, a quiet intensity. And his team perhaps on the verge. You see the dominance in the playoffs that has continued here today. Osmo will record a first down, a two-yard gain on third and one and still a chance for Montana. Yeah, but this is a, a South Dakota State team that has been utterly dominant. We saw it 145 to 15 in the FCS playoffs in third quarters this year. They've outscored opponents 123 to 14, absolutely dominating the third stanza. McDowell with time and the crossing route is there. Bergen, here comes a penalty marker. Adam Bach the tackle right at the line to gain. So for the time being a gain of 10. Gary Leeper going to tell us what's happening. Personal foul, face mask, number 32, defense, 15 yard penalty, beaten force from the end of the run, automatic first down. No, Bach didn't like the call. He made an incredible play in our first half. 
to stop Montana on fourth and goal from inside the one. That time will cost his team quality penalty yardage. That right hand does look like it gets the face mask of Bergen. It's not much or for long, but it's definitely a face mask. It's the definition of Grays, but that is a penalty. McDowell goes underneath Osmo. That route has been there. It feels like that's been Montana's best offensive play today. I know, and, and you're going to have to create something down the field at some point. You've got to instill in Clifton McDowell if you get the right look. Give your receivers a chance to make a play. On second down, the toss to Osmo. Has to jump on it, and he falls down on the fumble at back of the 40. So instead of third and potentially five to go, now becomes third and very long. Yeah. It's just a bad toss from Clifton McDowell. He can't really see it from this angle, but it's out in front of Nick Osmo. It's kind of hard. It's low. Really tough for a running back to deal with. You're definitely in four-down territory, though, Roy, so you just need to get some chunk. You don't have to get the whole thing on third down. Analytics suggests fourth and 12 or less, you're going for it. I'd say as long as it's fourth and 50 or less, you should probably go for it. I like the Jones analytics better there. Third and 13, and McDowell floats one looking for Bergen man-to-man -man coverage. Tucker Large was there. Because that ball is inside, Junior Bergen just never has a shot. If that ball is up and to the outside or even on the back shoulder, then you've got a chance. You've got so much room when you run that route from the slot. You've got so much room to the sideline to work with that you want your quarterback to lead him towards the numbers. I like the idea, but the execution just not there. Grizz one of two on fourth down today. And pressure off the edge. There was movement. Already at fourth and 13. False start. Number 55, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. That was Chris Walker, and that will make it fourth and 18. Chris Walker thought he was Lane Johnson in the NFL. Can't get a head start. A little too early on that one, trying to time it up. Now, two things are critical. Number one, you have to get the distance. Number two, even with a three-man rush, you have to give Clifton McDowell some time. He's been harassed today. He'll step up here. Throws it back across his body. Osmond's got to go. Osmo going to pick up the first down. A gain of 21 on fourth and 18. I'm not sure I would have advised the decision by Clifton McDowell to check it down, but he saw the space that his running back had. Just gave him an opportunity, and Osmo does the rest. The determination and the burst. The decisiveness to get up the field, well done by Nick Osmo. And a timeout called by South Dakota State. Part of the Jimmy snap. Rogers wants to Time talk out. it over. South Dakota State. That's their second timeout. 12.44 to go. We step aside in Frisco here at the FCS National Championship. Two previous appearances in the championship for South Dakota State. You go back to the spring of 2021. Mark Radowski gets injured early. Sam Houston prevails against the Jackrabbits. And then last year, around the same time, history achieved for SDSU. John Stiglmeyer goes out on top before handing over the coaching reins to Jimmy Rogers, his former starting linebacker in Brookings. And Coach Stig on the sidelines today, first class all the way. Great to see. Yeah, he is. They said that uh, he's still around the program doing some stuff in the development. And they've been working his tail off. He's been having to take that national championship trophy around consistently. Pistol look, screen Bergen, a little hook and lateral, back to Harris. And nothing doing a TFL. We'll check in with Taylor. I caught up with Coach Stickle Miles just moments ago when I was asking him, how does it feel in retirement? And he looked at me with a sad face almost and said, I miss it. He said, of course I miss environments like this, but I really miss the guys. I'll tell you what he's not missing, seeing South Dakota State dominate. He's loving every moment of that. Yeah, no question about it. We got to know him a little bit last year and to understand his story and bringing this program to prominence. Talk about going out on top. Your final game as a coach, you win the national championship. Now, Font slipped. 
The pass was wide of 14. That'll bring up third down. Not sure that pass would have gotten there anyway had Aaron Fonts not slipped. But how about the Grizz pulling out the hook and lateral in the first down play? Really well done by that South Dakota State defense of snuffing that out. Stucker Large. Was. Who has played an extra large role today. He said this week in terms of talking to Jesse Bobbitt and Jimmy Rogers, Tucker Large, best player in coverage. He's not been fooled today. McDowell's going to be sacked. A loss of two more. It'll be fourth down and long. There was just nowhere to go in the pocket for him. It was a twist up front that collapsed the pocket. Now you've got another fourth and long. But Quinton Hicks gets the sack. He was all the way as the left defensive end, right side of the offensive formation, comes all the way around to the other side to get in the backfield. With Kale Holston also involved in that sequence. Fourth down and 19. They converted on fourth and 18 moments ago and picked up 21 yards. Eli Gilman's got a long ways to go, and I don't think so. Stopped at the 20. And the Jacks will get the football back. Dyshawn Gales was not fooled. And this defense continues to flex on the FCS in 2023, now 24. It is a great job by the Jackrabbits defense covering down the field and forcing Clifton McDowell to go to the check Time down. On the field. But it felt like he had more time to let his receivers work downfield. It was this sack. It was a sack that set it up, and then the fourth down stop gets the Jackrabbits the ball back. Back in Frisco as we take a look at the Capital One Cup standings in a 20-point lead for defending national champion SDSU. Capital One Cup standings, teams competing for a combined $500,000 in student-athlete scholarships from Capital One on the men's side, Cal, Oklahoma State, currently at the top of the leaderboard. And on the women's side, FSU, Stanford, Clemson and North Carolina currently leading that charge. Always fun to keep track. How about the ACC? Stanford and Cal included. Two longtime ACC rivals. Gronowski back on the field. And Isaiah Davis expect to see a lot of 22. He'll push his way ahead across the 40. And Zay, the senior from Joplin, Missouri, picks up 21 yards. He has not been a major part of the offense today, but you got to feel like this time is Isaiah Davis time and in the ball off milking the clock as they inch closer and closer to completing a dynastic couple of years. It's the third time I've heard that word today. I like it more was, and more after I each occasion. I'm trying to do it once a quarter for you. I know you love it. Davis a stutter step. Oh, it feels like he's close to breaking off a, another long gainer. Braxton Hill. Stopped him for a gain of six, and Davis starting to get lathered up now for SDSU. 12 carries, 68 yards, almost six yards per touch. And, you know, at the beginning, during the first half, he only had five carries in that first half. He's gotten going here a little bit in the second half. He's done a really nice job as a blocker a couple of times, opening up lanes for Amar Johnson and Mark Gronowski as well. Well, you think about all the teams that have had their opportunities to win multiple national championships in the FCS ranks. You know, Montana did it 95 2001. The Grizz, a, a long time dominant force. North Dakota State started to take over around 2010 in that run of nine national championships. Of course, the Bison eliminated by Montana in the semifinals up in Missoula just a couple of weeks ago. But now here comes South Dakota State and a chance to go back to back. And with the talent, Jimmy Rogers is amassed on this roster going back to Coach Stig. The job that he did for so many years. Regardless of how this game concludes, you get the sense that SDSU next year, after losing all these seniors, still likely not to go anywhere. That pass batted down and nearly intercepted. Now, Kale Edwards, numeral zero, able to swat that one, almost rejected it like the Kimbe Mutombo. And after all of that, it'll be fourth down. 
and four yards to go. And Henry Noose, number 96, almost had an interception in the backfield. Big fella going up, trying to bring it down, not quite able to get it done. It's a really nice job by Cale Edwards, and then Noose goes up. I think you have to give Garrett Greenfield a PBU. Though. That is a PBU. I mean, it's not often that you see it on a big man stat line, especially a tackle. That is a great pass breakup. Getting his hand in, ripping it out. His first team all MVFC, Missouri Valley Football Conference, was Greenfield. 6'7", 320 pounds, the senior. We talked about his NFL potential. Show that play on the highlight reel by the time we get to April. Bergen awaits. End over end, a fair catch called for and made at the 12. A punt of 40. Grizz get it back, trailing by 20 when we return. And we talked about the run that North Dakota State went on. How about all those championships between 2011 and 2015? James Madison took over in 2016 before another run by the Bison 2017 through 2019. Sam Houston found a way in that spring season of 2021 before North Dakota State and then now South Dakota State kind of repositioned itself at the top of the FCS ranks. And perhaps now, Ronnie Jones, a changing of the guard occurring if South Dakota State holds on here to go back to back. 20 point game, just over nine minutes remaining in Frisco. McDowell surveys an incomplete. And it should have been enough for a first down to Keelan White. How about mention the changing of the guard? There it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously the run that North Dakota State was on, tremendous. It felt like they might never get beat consistently, but here comes South Dakota State. Five straight meetings against the Bison that they've won, including the national championship game a year ago. And this team, if they're able to complete this game, is going to go down as one of the greatest of all time at this level. It certainly feels that way. McDowell flush and into the ground. It'll be third and ten. Clifton McDowell undefeated as a starter before today. 11-0, took over at the end of September. Grizz never looked back. Running into a different kind of beast here at Toyota Stadium at SDSU and its dominance on defense. Jackrabbits. The clamps on and down on FCS competition in postseason play. Pressure off the edge through the eight gap. McDowell surveys and takes off. Needed 10, he'll get just enough to move the chains. have been sort of begging for over the course of the game. Clifton McDowell not only making plays with legs, but being decisive, going for first downs. I've not seen quite enough of that today from the Montana signal caller. Montana. I mean, they need to go a little bit faster if they have real desires to get back into this game. Yeah, the outcome not decided yet. Timeouts to work with. Osman dropped it. It'll be second and ten. McDowell from Spring, Texas, and for head coach Bobby Houck, outstanding find late in the process. Went all the way back to May. Clifton expected a large number of his friends and family in attendance today. Told you earlier, Spring, Texas, about 250 miles due south of where we are in Frisco. Texas version of a hop, skip, and a jump. I mean, it's about three and a half hours, but I think you're right. And McDowell, the same, nearly intercepted. Isaiah Stahlberg was tracking. Transfer from Nebraska. Boy, Bergen was open for a moment there, Roddy. An ambitious throw by Isaiah, by Clifton McDowell. And it's right up the seam, and he's got to get this over Isaiah Stahlberg and down before Dyshawn Gales hits Junior Bergen. Very, very ambitious there. And another third and long. This is a Montana offense that's been third and on average nine yards. 4 of 13 on third down. McDowell sensing pressure. Incomplete. Fonts the intended target. Gales in coverage. It'll be fourth down. Trailing by 20. 8.16 to go. Bobby Houck will send the punt team on the field. 
right, sending the punt team on the field feels like you're kind of giving up on the game. I know it's a long shot, but it's the only shot you have. There's not enough possessions left if you give the ball back to uh, to South Dakota State. And they're in full safe mode as South Dakota State. They don't believe that Montana's actually going to punt it. Tucker Large. All about drifting back instead. Just ignore the punt. And down by the Grizz at the 31. And that ball could have caromed a little further down the field. A punt of 47. South Dakota State football in Frisco when we come back. Well, the Miracle League of Frisco is a sports organization for special needs children here in North Texas. The FCS Championship, the Miracle League of Frisco, a long-standing relationship where the teams get, get out, spend quality time with these children throughout championship week. Both teams arriving more than four days ago in a great scene here on the practice fields just outside of Toyota Stadium. Had good weather for the most part the last couple of days, and for SDSU, might as well be brooking south this afternoon in Frisco. A 20-point lead, possession of the football, eight minutes to go, trying to go back-to-back -back in the national championship department. I commend both of these fan base for showing out in big numbers. Here's Johnson, and it'll be spun down crossing the 30. We were looking at the defensive dominance for the Jacks. We've seen now 45 possessions in postseason play that they've had to defend. They've given up one touchdown in this postseason run in the FCS playoffs. The numbers that this team has put up, they are mind-boggling. They are jaw-dropping in their dominance. And we've seen today Montana had opportunity after opportunity in that first half. And South Dakota State never got outside of themselves. They stayed calm and just played their game. 46 drives now, just the one touchdown. Incredible. Johnson a stutter step and a burst and a first down. Tackled by Corbin Walker, a gain of 12 more. Jackrabbits feeling it now. Disadvantage and on the move. Montana's done a good job today in the run game of creating negative plays, but when South Dakota State gets this play going, that mid-zone play, I mean, they are basically unstoppable. They do such a good job of creating movement, using your movement against you, passing off, working up to linebackers, that it's no wonder their running backs, who are very good in themselves, has, have this type of success that they've had. Under seven minutes to go. Gronowski wants to throw it. Heaves one deep. And looking for Yonke, one of the twins, incomplete at the 10. It was Jackson covered by Gradney. When you talk about some of the all-time great programs in the FCS ranks, look at the teams that have gone 15-0 or better. And the list isn't very long. These are the teams that were able to execute that and win the title. Most recently, North Dakota State. 16-0 in 2019, Roddy. Yeah. That Marshall 1996 team outscored opponents by 29.8 per game. We didn't think we'd see anything close to that until this team. So I think like, this team is going to be looked at right up there with that 96 Marshall team is one of the greatest ever. Pass may have sailed backwards to Davis. Kel Edwards drove him out of bounds. There was an interesting article written by Bill Connolly on ESPN.com this past week suggesting, according to some analytics and what he thought about the Jackrabbits, if you place this team in the Big Ten West, it would have won that division this year. When you look at the offense, the NFL talents, and he also said he believed that Jimmy Rogers' club is good enough to be ranked in the top 25 of the FBS, Roddy. I do agree with that last statement. Now, would they have won the Big Ten West? I don't know. They're seven to three in Kinnick Stadium is always a possibility going the Hawkeyes' way, but I certainly think that this is a top 25 FBS team. I mean. The quarterback play, the play that they have at the skill positions. More importantly, Roy, it's the line play that sort of separates them from this, the rest of the teams at this level. 28 consecutive wins. You mentioned the loss at Iowa. That's seven to three score. Jax didn't give up a touchdown in that game. Two safeties and a field goal for the Hawks. I was not exactly in the business of scoring touchdowns. Haven't been for years, but but it was a tremendous defensive performance. And they walked away from that game a feeling like they could do something special, and they absolutely have over the last two seasons. 
a sweet redemption for Jimmy Rogers. His final game as a linebacker for the Jacks against Montana in Missoula in the playoffs in a contest in which SDSU gave up a 27 point second half lead to be eliminated in the postseason back in 2009. We asked him about it yesterday. I said, Coach, how do you feel about the Grizz? And he said, I don't love them. Take a look at some of the longest winning streaks since the turn of the century. SDSU would tie Georgia 29 with a win here today. I mean, it kind of feels like this SDSU team shares a lot of similarities to that Georgia team. A, a, a long time, a team that for a long time couldn't quite get over the hump, had a rival that was, you know, its own dynasty close nearby. Now that they've gotten over it, you know, it looks like they're going to continue to extend that win streak even further. 23 to 3, just over 5 to go in Frisco. And Gilman dropped it. We'll check in with Taylor. One of the things we've seen out of South Dakota State all week long is a level of intensity and focus that's hard to describe, but you can tell that this team has won 28 games in a row. And I'm standing down here on the sideline now with this Jackrabbits team up by 20 points with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, and I still feel that intensity. Yes, guys are smiling a little bit, but they know this game is not over yet, and it's impressive, guys. I think the most impressive thing is the fact that, that this team judges itself by its standard and its standard alone. Pass out of bounds. McDowell hit the deck. And that'll bring up third down and 10. We were talking to some of their players yesterday, and they kind of told us about games this year where they would walk out of it with a dominant victory, and because they didn't live up to their own standard, they were disappointed and would go into practice that next week with the desire and the hunger to get better. When you've got a 20 plus game win streak to be able to do that, you can tell the culture of South Dakota State is firmly entrenched. And this senior offense, or this senior laden team, plays every play like it's their last, like you saw on the back of the helmet. Seven straight incompletions for McDowell. Three drops included in the mix, make it eight. And three and out force again by SDSU. Depreece the pressure. It'll be fourth and ten. It was Jason Freeman who told us yesterday. And he gave me chills after hearing it. We asked him about the pressure of a 28-game winning streak of winning back-to-back -back national championships. And he said, you know what, guys, we aren't afraid to lose. It's as simple as that. We are not afraid to lose. It's how we play. It's how we live. And in a sense, Roddy, it feels like that that removed all the pressure from this team this season. It's a team that has such great connectivity, such incredible belief. Look, they know how good they are. And if they play their game, unbeatable. Tucker Large fought the sun after a punt of 40. And the fair catch secure. Number one, Michigan. Number two, Washington. Tomorrow night, the college football playoff national championship game. Presented by AT&T, 730 Eastern ESPN will be the place to be from NRG Stadium right down the road in Houston. We'll have pregame coverage all day long and, of course, cover for the game on every platform, TV, radio, and digital. So many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. Roddy Jones, Michigan, Washington. Who do you like tomorrow night? I... I like Washington. There's something about that Washington team. Ten straight games they've won decided by ten points or less. The one that was decided by ten was USC. Uh, I think Michael Penix is playing too well. They think it's a close game, but I like Washington. Who do you like? 30 to 24, UW is my early guess. But yeah, a battle of contrasting styles and wills, the top passing offense in the country. Best defense in America, and let's see who prevails. Penix versus the Maize and Blue. Question is going to be: Can Michigan get pressure on Michael Penix? We've asked that question all year long, and the answer has been no to every single team, including Texas, whose defensive line talent is better than Michigan's. I do think Michigan's secondary is better than Texas's, but it's not as good as Washington's skill. Those defensive numbers for Michigan are minuscule, but. Big Ten, not the best offensive conference this season. Isaiah Davis probing his way now to a big gainer. Jump cut. 
Out down inside the 35. Davis starting to stockpile the yardage. Jackson Lee the tackle after a gain of 15. You talk about Washington. One quick story that A.J. Forbes relayed to us yesterday, the starting center for Montana. He said, in a way, we feel like we're responsible for the Huskies playing for the national championship. And we asked, well, what do you mean, A.J.? And he said, well, we went to Seattle and we upset Washington under former head coach Jimmy Lake. And that kind of kick-started this whole process of Kalen DeBoer, Michael Penix arriving in the Pac-12, now the Big Ten. And uh, so they've had a good laugh in the building in the last week or so after Washington was able to secure its path to the national championship game. But yeah, this Montana team went to Seattle just two and a half years ago and won. And beat a top, I believe they were at the top 20 Washington at the time. But I think what this Montana team has accomplished, the magical run that they were on in the postseason, back-to-back -back overtime wins. The Missoula Zoo was absolutely coming apart at the seams during that game against North Dakota State. I mean, it's a run that they'll never forget. They're going to come up short here in the championship game. But what a job Bobby Houck has done with this crew coming out of a really tough conference in the Big Sky, getting to the national championship game. And league champions in the Big Sky, just one loss before today. That came way back in September. Back-to-back -back overtime victories that we've documented with Furman and North Dakota State and the Bison. And Montana certainly appears to be on its way back with head coach Bobby Houck, who has done a great job not only as the head man and CEO, but the special teams coordinator, getting Junior Bergen kind of going and what he's been able to do this year. Clifton McDowell, his development. It's been a remarkable story, a comeback story in Missoula. And I think the, the learning points coming out of this game is taking advantage of the opportunities in the first half. How differently could the game have been? You're able to punch the ball in the end zone a couple of times in that first half and made South Dakota State really chase you in this game. It was Adam Bach, what appeared to be a path for Eli Gilman to cross the goal line. And Bach, using every fiber of his being, kept Gilman, Jerry Rice, FCS Offensive Freshman of the Year, out of the end zone in what certainly was the play of the day. And well, you wonder what this game would have looked like if that outcome was different right at the goal line. So on fourth down, Hunter Dustman trots on the field. His career long of 49 yards came against South Dakota. He's trying to do his best Adam Vinatieri impersonation here at the very end in Frisco. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I'd kick the field goal here. I think there's too many things that can go wrong. Snap over your head. You've already struggled. The field goal operation today with some bobbles from the holder. If it gets blocked, could be returned for a touchdown. It's a 50 yarder. I mean. I, I, I think you either go for it or you punt it. I think you're kind of in that no man's land where the worst option here, the most dangerous option certainly, is a field goal. And even if you make it, I mean, there's no time for Montana in this game either way. But the one way you could give them hope is a blocked field goal that was returned for a touchdown. Now, Dustman has missed three of his last four attempts over 40 yards. This one would be from 50, unless you want to try some kind of crafty pooch punt. Remember Dustman? That's it. Yeah, he also handles the punting duties. And like if you're looking at timing wise or, or from a score standpoint, if you do think it's possible that they can get back into it, a 23 point lead is still a three score game as a 20 point lead is. So now they're going to talk about it. And Mark Gronowski back on the field. Dustman retreats. And it was Gronowski that was waving to the SDSU fans right behind their bench as he trotted back on. It is fourth down and seven, only 97 seconds to go. Now for Gronowski, too, the comeback story. It was completed a year ago after being injured in this game in the spring of 2021. He missed the ensuing fall. He'll pooch punt it down. And a wobbler. Karam's out near the 11-yard line. But it was Gronowski that missed that following season. Returned last year. And only the one loss to open the year against Iowa 
And defeating NDSU handily. Approaching 29 straight wins. And in these playoff runs, Roddy, domination. Domination to say the least. I mean, I'm not sure I've ever seen a team this dominant, not even those Georgia teams that we've compared them to in recent memory. It's been an incredible run. And look, they're going to turn over a lot of guys. There's a lot of COVID years out there, but a lot of seniors. So Jimmy Rogers is going to go sort of into a different phase next year, but this run has been incredible. Ali Ayat, the new quarterback. So McDowell's afternoon comes to a close. And a mere formality. Under 90 seconds remaining. It was 7-3 in that first half. And at halftime, where South Dakota State found its rhythm and its groove in the third quarter. It is a cool full circle moment for, for Grizz fans and, and the Ya'at family. Because Kealii Ya'at, his dad Brian, Grizz Hall of Famer, was an All-American, a 1996 National Championship, was a quarterback on that team. So cool to be on, not the same field, but the same stage as your dad once was. And Fonts ricochets out of bounds. One minute, 15 seconds to go. South Dakota State started its season against Western Oregon. Jimmy Rogers told us it was a bit different, an out-of-body experience perhaps as the head coach this year and dealing so many different things instead of simply calling plays on defense. Jesse Bobbitt, the defensive play caller, now told us as well that it took a little bit of time to kind of settle into the new role. But it has worked out quite well in Brookings. Gain of four for Montana. And you wonder what next season looks like. A hefty part of this roster graduate and move on to the NFL. Running out of eligibility. You also wonder, Mark Gronowski, will he have a decision to make? He still has eligibility left. He's yet to finish his mechanical engineering degree. There's certainly plenty of motivation to return and try to win a third national title and really write your signature amongst the all-time greats in the FCS ranks. In the era of the transfer portal, Jimmy Rogers telling us this week they've launched a new NIL collective statement 605, and that'll be a priority. Entering the offseason to make sure that everybody can return will uh, yacht behind Drew Deck. You mentioned Mark Gronowski and you know he's in an interesting spot because you've got the on the one hand the option if, if you stay and you're able to have three consecutive titles I mean that app state team between 05 and 07 and North Dakota State obviously during their run the teams in recent memory to have done that if he's able to do that he will go down as one of the greatest players to ever play at that level, maybe in college football as a whole, but in the NIL world, if an FBS comes calling, you know, can South Dakota State put together a package that encourages Mark Kronowski to stay? Nonetheless, that's a later problem. Right now, he's focused on enjoying his second consecutive national championship. We asked him the question yesterday, have you heard from other schools? And he indicated he had not. So a lot to potentially unpack there, but Kronowski, Jack Rabbit through and through, as is that man, Jimmy Rogers. And there were questions after John Stiglmeyer retired after last season's run. And they have been answered. Eddie Robinson, coach of the year nationally. And Roddy, after this game, he will have yet to lose a contest. A resounding 15-0 start to his head coaching career. I think this coaching thing looked too easy. I mean, people around the country Going to be thinking, wow, I get into coaching. All you do is win. That's fun, right? They're down in five after the timeout. Ayat feeling the pressure, and down he goes back at the 40. And a microcosm of how this game has unfolded. Quentin Hicks with the sack, the fifth of the game for the SDSU defense. And precious time continues to tick away on the Grizz. You gotta imagine now, artist decision that's gonna be made on that Jackrabbit sideline is what color Gatorade or Powerade are they dousing Jimmy Rogers with? 
Fourth down and 17. It comes down to one more play. Fonts in front of the line to gain. And a turnover on downs. Victory formation and one more deal down to come for SDSU. And there it is. The Gatorade on top of the head coach. And all smiles finally. And of course it's blue. Celebration started on the South Dakota State sideline. Clock not quite at zeros yet. You got one kneel down, and they can go into it in earnest. What a team, what a year. There are not enough superlatives for just how incredible the run that this team has been on and the type of season that this team has put together. It's a special group, Jacks fans, and be able to see him take one more snap as a unit. Gronowski under center, and that will do it. Time ticking away in Frisco. Back to back Jacks, and South Dakota State wins another national championship.